as I sit here on vacation aimlessly swiping through Hinge, trying to find the love of my life, I find myself wondering, is Jamar Chase the best wide receiver in football? Jamar, through the last three games, week three to five, 396 yards and five touchdowns. A lot of those coming on deep shots or just yards after the catch plays. Last week against Carolina, that 63-yard touchdown where he broke a couple tackles. And then this week against the Ravens, that 70-yard touchdown that was just pure after-the-catch bliss. I, I'm i wondering this because I'm watching every receiver in the NFL. You know, Nico Collins is having an outstanding year. He hurt his hamstring today, but before that, two catches for 78 and a touchdown. I had him in some underdog entries for 79 and a half yards. They got rescued, though. Shout out underdog, code fanatics at sign up. But Jamar does everything on the football field. He can run routes. He has a great release. He's physical. Yards after the catch demon. Vertical threat, deep playability. Elite speed. What can't Jamar Chase do? Let's go through each one individually. Route running and release. He's not in a like the best route runner in the NFL, but he always finds a way to get open. He knows how to use his quick, twitchy releases off the line to beat press coverage, whether it's on a fade route or a slant or a post, like that uh, touchdown against the Ravens today, the 41-yarder, or really any route, especially outcutting routes, comebacks, outs, little, you know, like curls, anything like that. He finds a way to get open with his routes. He has quick feet, good body movement, good hips, good eyes, good everything when it comes to route running. As for the release, it's twitchy, it's fast, it's right off the line, it's everything that you could ask for for a receiver in press coverage, or any type of coverage too. He also finds a soft spot in zones for Joe Burrow to find him. Joe Burrow has to get out of the pocket, you know what he does? He redirects his route so that he can get open so that Joe can find him. And then his number one thing is obviously his deep playability. He can catch a ball contested, he gets open downfield separates against anyone. I mean, dude, I feel bad for Deontay Banks next week. I'm pretty sure they play the Giants. I feel bad for him. He's shaking in his boots thinking about this Jamar Chase matchup because he has been bad. (laughs) That's that's besides the point. I mean, look at that play against C.D. Lamb, though, last uh, last Thursday. (sighs) I mean, the deep playability from Jamar, we've seen it every year of his career. Literally, his first career touchdown against the Vikings. (laughs) It was just a deep shot. Him and Joe Burrow have that connection to where he can time it perfectly to where Jamar just is always there. And it's amazing. It's amazing chemistry by these two. And yards after the catch is another thing that he does better than anyone in the NFL. I don't care what you say. Intermediate routes, he's won the best after yards after the catch. Short routes, he's won the best. Deep shots, I mean, most of them are close to the end zone anyways. But today against the Ravens, he did something that I don't know how he did. It was like a little slip screen on the outside with two blocking receivers next to him. He slips in between them somehow. There was like no room to get in between. Makes one cut and then he's 70 yards downfield for a touchdown. And last week against the Panthers, catches a you know crossing route over the middle of the field, breaks a tackle, you know, gets by a couple more guys, 63-yard touchdown. Every year, again, and then a couple years ago against the Chiefs when he had that 200-yard game, everything was after the catch. That one insane touchdown where he just broke like five tackles and ended up in the end zone. It's because he's so physical. He's so physical at the point of contact, at the line of scrimmage. He's just a physical receiver, and it's not even like he's that big. He's six feet. Trust me, that's a lot bigger than me. But for an NFL receiver, six feet's around the average. It's like 5'11", 6", 6 one. But he's just so physical when it comes to taking contact and bouncing off of it that it doesn't matter what he does. He's going to get past you. He's going to get those extra yards, whether it's for a touchdown or even just like an extra five yards after contact. Yards after the catch is Jamar's best thing about himself. I mean, I don't know if I've seen a receiver like him after the catch. I mean, we've had Golden Tate in the past. We've had Jarvis Landry in the past. But I think that Jamar might be the best yards after catch receiver I've ever seen. Because just because that physicality and his ability to make quick cuts just like his route running and releases... It's insane. I mean, what does anyone in the league do better than him? I mean, Nico is great. Justin Jefferson, he's the 1A, 1B with Jamar. But, like, for example, like Tyreek, he's faster and really good at contested catches. But I think Jamar does everything else better. Justin Jefferson, I think it's right there. I mean, JJ is a better route runner. After the catch, it goes to Jamar. Physicality goes to Jamar. Deep playability, it goes to Jamar. Releases, it goes to Justin Jefferson. Hands, it's equal. 
And also having this chemistry with Joe Burrow is just, it's something that you can't really, you can't foresee with wide receivers. Yes, they went to college together. But it's just so lucky that he got his college quarterback to where they have, they know each other so well. They play perfectly together. That also helps Jamar's case. I mean, I know right now, uh, Justin Jefferson has Sam Darnold, who's played at an MVP level this year. Last year, he had uh, Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins and Kirk Cousins for a little bit, and he got hurt. But it's no matter the quarterback play, I don't think that you can give the best receiver in the league to, to anyone right now besides Jamar. Nico Collins has a case. Justin Jefferson has a case. But just the way that he is playing, I mean, yes, the first two weeks were not great. But, you know, he's coming back from not really being in the offseason because, you know, fighting for the contract. But since then, 396 yards, four, five touchdowns, that's almost like 130 yards per game from Jamar Chase. He has, he's, I don't, him and Nico Collins are on another level this year. And when you look at Jamar too, it's not like he's doing all of this at Nico Collins' size, you know, 6'4", and all that, but he's doing this at six feet. He has better game speed than he did on, you know, like 40 yard or anything. Not that his 40 was slow or anything, but he's quite literally one of the fastest players in the NFL, no matter what his 40 yard dash said. And I know it was fast, but you know, you got guys like H. Han Hill, you know, all them, Xavier Worthy. He's one of the fastest players in the league, despite what anyone else might say. How do how else does he get past these guys in yards after the catch situations, deep ball situations? I think he's in the perfect situation for himself to succeed and prove that he's the best receiver in the NFL because he's on a team that'll consistently be in shootouts as well because their defense can't do anything. I mean, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk about week five and how Zach Taylor and this defense threw the game away. Lamar fumbles in overtime. What do they do? Three run plays up the middle. Not give to Joe Burrow who has five touchdowns. Not throw it to Jamar Chase on a screen or legit anything who has almost 200 yards. They run three run plays up the middle with a team that wasn't running the ball well all game. What 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 are we thinking, Zach Taylor? And the defense blew it. I mean, they can't they can't tackle anyone, can't cover anyone. Freaking their third string tight end Kohler had like sixty four yards and a touchdown today. And, my, and Mark Andrews had a bounce back game. But Jamar Chase is just doing everything at an elite level right now, and he has his whole career. No defensive back can cover him. I know he's played Washington. I know he's played Carolina. But he's played the Ravens. He's played the Patriots where he had 62 yards. Nothing great, but, you know, 62 yards is like an okay game. And then he did have one bad game after that um, against uh, Kansas City. But, again, he was coming back from all that. But then once he got to Washington, had that two-touchdown game, he was back in form. And he hasn't, he hasn't gone back since. And he won't go back. Jamar Chase, to me, does everything. Everything well. Especially, his best traits are the deep ball ability, his ability to get separation no matter what. He could be playing Jair Alexander for all I care. He's getting separation at least three yards on a deep ball. His yards after the catch is just insane. Like I said, he's the best yards after catch receiver I've seen since those mid-2010s guys. Like the Tates, the Landrys, and all that. It's just something about him that he just uses his play strength to his ability. Because he wasn't the strongest guy, obviously. You know, wide receivers aren't the strongest position in the NFL, but he has a play strength that works at the line of scrimmage on press coverage, that works yards after the catch, breaking tackles, that works in every aspect of the game to allow him to be the best receiver in the National Football League. I can't think of anyone who does something at a drastically different level than Jamar right now. Like, Justin Jefferson's a better route runner, but it's not drastic. Tyreek Hill is faster, but well, it is kind of drastic, but that's not really like, you know, whatever. But the uncoachable skills that Jamar has, the physicality, the release, it is coachable, but you know, all of that, the yards after catch ability, his contested catch ability too. I mean, he just catches balls with guys in his face. There were a couple like short routes today, you know, like anywhere from five to 15 yards, short to intermediate routes today, where he was just catching with the defender right on his back. Jamar really is to me, the best receiver in the NFL. And whether it's because of his situation with Joe Burrow and a great offense, or because he's just that guy. And I think it's a second option. Well, it's a com- combination of both, but I think the second option is definitely the the one that proves to be true more often. Um, but I want you to tell me what receiver is better than Jamar Chase right now and why? Because yes, he had the bad first two weeks and other receivers had a good first two weeks. But he 
climbed back up in the receiving yards ranking today. He's already up there in touchdowns. He's not up there in targets or receptions. I want you to tell me, what does he do worse than any of the other top guys right now? Because Amon Ra's not better. Nico is not more skilled, but he's playing better right now, or at least yardage-wise, statistically. Justin Jefferson is right there. Tyreek Hill is not playing well because, you know, quarterbacks, I don't blame him for that. A.J. Brown's hurt. You can't tell me another receiver that is doing what uh, Jamar Chase is doing right now, given everything you went through with the offseason while it was self-inflicted, and showing that level of skill at every facet of being a wide receiver. Short routes, behind the line of scrimmage, intermediate routes. He's amazing on intermediate routes as well. That's one of his bread and butters. And then the deep ball. He's clearly the best deep receiver in the NFL right now. Contested catches, just getting open deep. I mean, against Washington, both of his touchdowns were like 40 yards. Today, he had a 41-yard post-route touchdown. Last week, he had the, you know, the intermediate one. But you can't tell me that someone that's a better deep ball receiver and better after the catch than Jamar Chase. And that's two of the biggest things you need as a receiver if you're going to make explosive plays. There's no better breakaway or explosive play receiver than Jamar Chase right now. Maybe Tyreek Hill, but he can't do it with Tyler Huntley. I don't know. Jamar Chase is the best receiver in the NFL, and I think that is just way too obvious at this point in 2024.